at 30 minutes past the hour, something new in the newsroom. Talk back for 30 minutes. Three topics, great guests, and your input. So let's go. Talk back question. First question. Why is atheism on the rise in America? What do Kathy Griffin, Julianne Moore, and Facebook founder Mike Zuck Mark Zuckerberger have in common? All are atheists, and they're proud of it, and why not? One in five Americans claim no religious affiliation at all. We ask this question in light of Pope Benedict's resignation. He's stepping down because of age, but no one can dismiss the fact his tenure has been marred by sexual abuse involving Catholic priests. But let's not just pick on the Catholic Church. What about the extremist men of God who provide fodder for YouTube sensations like the amazing atheist guy. Here's the debate over whether godless schools caused Newtown. We've kicked God out of our public school system. And I think God would say to us, hey, I'll be glad to protect your children, but you got to invite me back into your world first. God didn't save the kids because he's not allowed in school. So all of a sudden, God just respects the law of man? Isn't he an all-powerful being? So the talk back question today, at least the first one, why is atheism on the rise in America? Joining me now to discuss this are William Lane Craig, the founder of ReasonableFaith.org, Reverend Markel Hutchins, a civil and human rights activist, and T.J. Kirk, who calls himself the amazing atheist. Welcome to all of you. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to address the first question to you, Will, because the Pope is resigning at the end of the month, and, and you say that this resignation comes at a time when the Catholic Church was trying to combat atheism. Yes, the rise in the non-religious or the rise in secularism in Western society has been one of the uh, concerns of the current Pope. Um, he faces tremendous challenges to Christianity from both the left and the right, and this Pope has stood like a bulwark against the challenge of secularism on the left and then the challenge of militant Islam on the right. And I have tremendous respect for him for his resignation today because it shows that this Pope is not content to be a mere figurehead. He wants to be an activist uh, in combating these challenges to Christian faith and that takes an enormous amount of energy which I think he believes now requires a younger man. And I'm sure T.J. would say that uh, something about the sex abuse scandal within the Catholic Church have, have, have caused a lot of people to lose faith in religion. T.J., are you with me? Yes, I am. Well, bigger than the sex abuse scandal is, if you just look at the history of Christianity, um, Jesus grew up in a time where people were very impoverished and he created a religion that gave people hope in very desperate times. But I think that now we live in a world where science has alleviated a lot of those problems. So it's, it's really not that strange that people would start to turn away from religion. And it's not really necessarily a turn to atheism. Of the 19% of Americans who have uh, no longer have a religious affiliation of any kind, uh, many of them still believe in God. It's the social institution of religion that they're really rejecting. So, so Reverend Hutchins, uh, address that. Why, why are people loath to say they're any one religion? Well, I think that, that he's right. TJ's right in one real sense, and that is just because we don't identify, or some don't identify themselves as having a particular religious persuasion does not mean that they are atheists. Religion is a, an expression of spirituality. So I think there is a major difference in whether or not people are actually non-religious and whether they don't believe in God and or, or the existence of God overall. I think a growing number of Americans are struggling and grappling with this issue of is there a God that really exists? When we look at our starving economy, when we look at the fact that people are still losing their homes to foreclosure, mass shootings in school, so many things that are really challenging to our nation and our world, it causes people who may not be faith-oriented anyway to question the existence of this God that we talk about and we preach about in Christian pulpits across the country. So you're the theologian, Bill, so you know, yes, people I do wonder why why God I, allows these things. Yes, and I appreciate TJ's honesty in saying that we shouldn't equate non-religious with atheism. In fact, atheism is not on the rise in this country. It's around two to three percent of the population. And the reason people it's identify five. often as it's non- five percent. I think it's two to three from my, the studies I've seen. But the reason people often identify as non-religious is because denominational labels 
have become so much less important. People don't self-identify as a Presbyterian, a Catholic, a Methodist, an, an Episcopalian. And, and so, as Mark, Markel says, very often these people do believe in God. They have a prayer life. They have a spiritual life. But denominational labels are a lot less important. And the well, second point well, that well, if I... I I'd well, like I mean, TJ the, to the, get the, in the here. Thing that, the, the, the thing that is really kind of important about that, though, too, is... 5% of people self-identify as atheists. It's also kind of disingenuous to say that people who don't believe in God yet don't identify as atheists aren't atheists. They're still atheists because atheism is by definition not believing in God or in a any sort of particular deity. So there's a lot of people out there who don't identify as atheists but really they are atheists. Um, so I think it's actually probably a little higher than 5%, but 5% is the number of people that self-identify as atheists. Okay, sadly we're going to have to wrap this up, but it was fascinating.